Hey, welcome back guys, JC here. A while back I did a review for this brushed all-in-one flight controller, and after that I did a build video with this. And then after that I promised to give you guys some flight footage, and I completely forgot. Some of you guys recently reminded me, so here it is. I did accidentally delete the build video, so I'm just going to quickly go over this, uh, show you how I have everything wired, what parts I'm using. I'll also leave all the parts used in the description below so you can check it out there. So this all-in-one flight controller does have a built-in on-screen display that is also capable of being used with Betaflight's OSD feature, meaning that you get that really nice OSD menu where you can change your PIDs, rates, uh, expos, filters, and much, much more. They also have three different versions of this flight controller depending on what type of transmitter you are using. They have a Free Sky version, a Spectrum version, and also a Fly Sky version, which also means the Fly Sky version can be used with the Turnigy transmitters because they use the same protocol. So this is the Fly Sky version, and I am using the Turnigy Evolution on it. This is just a seven or eight dollar camera. I don't know how much the video transmitter costs. It's very cheap, but works very well. And the frame cost five bucks. It also comes with this top cover. And I just put it on, slap a rubber band on it, and it's been holding up great. For wiring, um, well, if you if you look at the website, the web link that I'm leaving you for this flight controller, they have a wiring diagram on it, so you can get a better look there. But I just wired in my motors. That's pretty simple. The video coming from the camera, I put on this pin here, which is the video in. Then you have video out, which will go to your video transmitter. And then a uh, five volt power pin, which is powering my camera and ground. Then on this side, this is supposed to be for the addressable LEDs, but I'm actually using this five volt power source to power my video transmitter along with a ground. I'll throw a picture on your screen of the video transmitter, the backside of it, uh, which is labeled, but it's pretty simple. You just have ground, and then power, and then your video in on this pin here. Over on this side, uh, it does come with a linear polarized antenna, but it, it is junk. I do have a video showing you how you can make these yourself, and uh, this one works much, much better. You have your signal pin in between two ground pins, so your signal wire will go to that. Your uh, shielding wires will go to both the grounds on both sides. And then you have channels 1, 2, and 3. You can place a dip switch on this, but it's more weight and takes up more space. Uh, the other way to select your channels is actually soldering, uh, well, placing solder between the pad and this metal case, which is going to short it out, and that's how you choose your frequency. I have just a drop of solder between channel 3 and the metal case. That will put your frequency somewhere around 5800, a little bit higher, probably closer to 5810, 5808 which was, that's going to be like channel C5, something like that. As for the battery, I'm using a uh, 380 milliamp an hour one cell. Um, I'm not saying this battery is great or anything, this is just what I have. I'm not recommending it or anything. Uh, it, it's just, it works. You can go smaller if you want, probably, uh, like, I would actually recommend like a 300 milliamp an hour. That's probably your best bet. Now for the flight footage. So here I'm just going to show you that the OSD menu works just like it does on the Omnibus and the new Betaflight F3 flight controllers. In fact, this flight controller uses the same firmware as the Omnibus. I really like this OSD menu. Like I said, you can change anything, your PIDs, rates, filters, expos, and much, much more. I only have voltage and timers on my on-screen display, um, but just keep in mind you can use much more than that. I just don't really see a reason to since, I mean, these micro-sized multi rotors it's not like you need to see your current or RSSI or anything like that. As far as flight time, I'm getting a little over 5 minutes on the 3800 milliamp an hour batteries. But I'll also let you know that the, these batteries, I've had over a year. Actually, I've had them for about a year and two months, so they are pretty worn out. I don't know what kind of flight time you can expect on a fresh battery, but if I'm getting over five minutes on a year old battery then I would expect it would be a little bit better but even at five minutes I can I still consider that plenty of time because I mean I've got like 20 of these things so they actually charge faster than I can use them as for my final thoughts on this build I really enjoy it it's, it's very cheap uh, it's very fun it's just something you can keep around to play with when you get bored 
um, in between you know me editing videos or doing whatever else I do I pick this thing up and fly around the house and you can see how I've set up my chairs to be like an obstacle course so I just practice flying in between them and stuff like that and it's really good practice too I guess it's like an alternative to a simulator it's not quite like flying a full-size multi-rotor but I mean practice is practice I guess I think this flight controller really makes the build because on my other micro size builds I had the minimum OSD micro and then also added in a receiver. So uh, with having but having both of those built into this flight controller really keeps the weight down and that increases efficiency, flight time, and it's you know less wiring of course. But that's gonna do it for this one. Like I said, all parts used are in the description below. Thanks for watching and I will see you again soon.